Ooh, we're into double digits. Whoa. <laughs> um, I figured the way that I would do, um, do this is start off with a quick demo of all uh, the features and then open it up to questions so that everybody um, can get on and kind of get their questions answered. Um, there's actually a chat function as well. Um, if you guys would like to um, write in questions as we're going um, so that you can remember and I will answer them later. Let's take this guy in a corner. All right, perfect. Okay, um, very exciting uh, that you guys are all on here with me. Um, we've been doing some great things here at Spectora and it's been a bit of a crazy ride the last couple weeks. We just got back from San Diego. Uh, doing Ashi Inspection World. Um, it was, was kind of our first year of hitting the conference scene and we're trying to figure out if we're gonna go down to Fabi um, in Orlando in March. Uh, and then we're definitely gonna be up at Internachi uh, for their Boulder one in June, just because we're based in Denver. So we can make a 45 minute trek. It's perfect. Um, okay, places that I would like to start. Um, I recognize a lot of people on this chat already, uh, so forgive me if I'm hitting a couple uh, redundant things that you guys already know. But I literally just got off the phone with an inspector who's looking at our software down in Florida, um, and he actually originally was intimidated by the software um, until it took a little bit of explaining, and it turns out that he didn't even kind of realize that we had all the business tools. Uh, he thought we were just the app on the Apple and Android devices, and so um, after he figured that out, all of a sudden, not intimidating at all, uh, there's a lot of functionality. So Spectora.com is going to be your hub for all of your business tools, for everything that you basically need to run a home inspection business. And um, we've got template editing. Usually inspectors have one template per service. And so you'll have one for your residential inspection, one for your radon, one for your mold, stuff like that. Um, we've got all the scheduling capabilities and a couple different options that I'll walk you guys through of online scheduling where clients and agents can pick specific dates and times um, or just an inspection request form if you would like someone to just input their uh, data and say I'd like it for tomorrow and then you get in contact with them and confirm it. Um, then we also have our automated emails over here uh, which can be triggered by um, confirming the inspection, by adding a new agreement or new fee, um, reminding uh, in anticipation of the inspection starting. You can have up to three emails and two text messages for that. Uh, the report ready and then follow-up emails, um, which the follow-up emails have gotten our inspectors a ton of reviews if you put hyperlinks directly to your uh, Google My Business or Yelp profiles on there. Uh, it just, it cuts down on the amount of clicks that uh, your clients and agents have to do and make sure that you guys get the um, reviews that you guys deserve as great inspectors. Um, we also have a, a couple different payment options. You can accept uh, credit cards online and on the app now. Um, oh, actually the mobile release with the in-app um, credit card entering is going to land here in a couple days. So that's exciting. Um, and then we've also got contacts uh, management where you can keep track of all your agents. We've got integrations with MailChimp if you wanted to set up uh, email uh, drip campaigns based off of send uh, all my new agents um, email on their birthday or all the newsletters and stuff like that. Um, cool. So this is Spectora.com. Um, our free trial is five published inspections, but there are no limitations to the software besides how many inspections you can publish. So you can go ahead and jump on here and uh, set up all your automated emails, your payment processing, all that stuff. And when you do become a paying Spectorian, um, you won't have to transfer all that stuff over and redo it. You just would unlock the function where you can schedule more inspections. Um, okay. Then the app is a report writing companion app. It does have a scheduler, but the scheduler is essentially a light scheduler. It doesn't have the nice um, automated functions like the ability to pull in Zillow or the 
um, auto populating of the contacts just because it, it is a basic scheduler. We do have plans to update that in the future um, and get everything connected. But right now, the app is just the report editor that you're gonna use on site. Um, I guess my good place to start would actually be down in how to schedule an inspection, I think. There's a bunch of different ways you can go about the software. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we are going to um, click this new inspection button and it is going to open up this form. Um, you can choose which inspector um, to assign and you can choose multiple with these check boxes if you have multiple agents on there. That's Mike, he's one of our founders. Um, you can click the date here to open up a calendar to choose which day you would like the inspection to take place on. Same thing with uh, the dates here and the duration. This duration is actually set by you in your settings and I'll show you guys how to do that and go through that in here in a little bit. Um, but so that's the base of what a no frills attached, no add-ons home inspection would take. So when you're confirming this to the clients, um, you would be able to say, I will start at 8 a.m. and I estimate I'll be done at 1030. Um, cool. So then we go to adding the address and the zip code. These four pieces of information, the time, the date, the address, and the zip code are actually the only four things that you need to schedule an inspection in Spectora. You can add all the client information later. You can add the agent information. Um, so if you don't know that, go ahead and schedule the inspection, book it out, get everything ready, um, and then you can add that stuff later. Um, I've had a couple situations recently on tech support where inspectors have not really known the correct address or something like that. And you can absolutely make up an address and put it in there. I see a lot of one, two, three, four will schedule later and the zip code is one, two, three, four or something like that. So, so long as the time, the date, oops, didn't mean to click that. The time, the date, the address and the zip code are all populated, you can go ahead and confirm the inspection. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to pull up our office here. Um, we are based in Denver. So pull this guy up. So now you will see that, hopefully you guys can see that perfect. Cool. Um, you'll see that when you enter the information, if there is a Zillow listing over here, um, or if not Zillow, a Google street map, um, it will pull in. Now, we don't actually work in a kitchen gallery. Since then, uh, it's been converted into this amazing common workspace uh, that we share with a whole bunch of other startups and tech companies. But, so if I wanted to keep this year built in here, the estimated square footage, have all that stuff in there, particularly because you can set your pricing modifiers with Spectora based off of square footage, age of home, uh, year built, uh, miles away from the company address or kilometers if you're abroad. Um, I know I'm missing a couple in there. There's a couple different options in there. Um, so these year built and square footage uh, will be able to pull in that modifier so you're not having to sit up there with your 10 button calculator calculating at your price anymore. Good time saving. Um, if you do not want this and it is not relevant or since then it's been wiped down and built up completely new, you can choose to discard the Zillow information. You can also do this later. So you can have it set up right now and then discard it later in the inspection. Um, and then additionally, um, this came up the other day on tech support. Um, you, you guys are gonna get tired of me hearing that, but it's a great place to learn the commonly asked questions because that's where you ask questions. Um, you're not stuck with this cover photo. You can replace it either on the app or on the desktop editor. Um, so you could keep the year built in the square footage in here, but then later replace the cover photo to something that actually is realistic and shows you the front of the house. Okay. So now if we scroll down, oh, before I actually scroll down, you'll see this mileage modifier up here. This is just a handy little fun feature. In your settings for Spectora, you can actually um, put in where your driving directions should start. Um, it's down in user options and then dashboard settings, I believe. Um, and so you can keep track of who is the closest closest inspector if you're a multi-inspector, um, or you can just say, see how far away it is in the estimated drive time. Um, at the end of the year, we actually have the functionality um, to pull up the mileage that you have driven throughout the year. Um, we do 
um, have it, it's as the crow flies. So it's not going to actually follow through what side streets you have, but it's the best we've got. Um, cool, um, I've got a hydration, oops, okay. So now we're scrolling down. Um, for the clients, because there's not very many returning clients, this client's area does not auto-populate the way that you'll see that the agent one does here in a second. Um, and so if I'm gonna put myself as the client in here, perfect. Um, I can also choose to add a CC that this client's name won't actually appear on the agreement or the report. Um, usually this is good if you have a um, senior who is getting the um, inspection done who's not great with uh, email or computers and you've got a granddaughter or somebody helping out with that so that everything is on here but you're also forwarding the email and the CC to somebody else. Um, it's also good for property management um, companies who are your clients. You can add the phone, you can add a referral source, we've got a whole section of metrics um, where you can track your referral sources throughout the year so you can know, know who your greatest referrals are. And then um, if you hit this add additional client button, if you have two clients that don't share a last name or two people who are going in and buying a house together, you can have two different clients on here, which is nice. Um, it's important to note that you can only have one client's agent and that's because on our reports, there's only one place for an agent's bubble uh, picture and information to be on the reports. Um, and so it would be pretty complicated for us to uh, change that functionality to be able to have two in the layout and all that stuff. So unfortunately, you're stuck with one client's agent right now, but you can have two clients. So we keep scrolling down. Um, I'll go through in a little bit and um, show you how to set up your services and fees. But if we select a service, you can see that there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, the one that I can most commonly see is one service uh, per that you can choose, um, like a residential inspection, a radon, something like that. Um, if you would like to have multiple templates pull in per service, you can also always do something like residential plus sewer scope, something like that. Um, I am seeing an increasing trend of people choosing to package their services together. And so um, either a red, white, and blue package, a gold, silver, platinum, um, something like that where you can do the upselling for services group, uh, based on off of packages. Um, so you can do it any way that you would like in there. Um, when we select a residential service, you'll see that you get all of these modifiers to pull up. So, and I will show you how to do this in settings. Um, this is calculating out for the different years. Um, if you wanted a credit card fee on there, um, based off of the modifiers in your services and fees area, and it's gonna come up with this total. Then it will show you which templates and which agreements are also pre-populated in services and fees um, that are set to pull in. If there's something about these where you're like, yep, all those are completely fine, uh, but I do wanna give them, say, a military discount, and then I also wanna add a second agreement in there, we would hit this manual edit button and open it up and it's gonna give you this extra functionality that's normally hidden where you can go through in here and you can say, oh, I actually want the radon agreement too and I can select multiple and then click off of that. And then if you're like, mm, I wanna add a discount, we can click fee and we can do discounts um, and then we can add a negative value. So that negative value is gonna achieve the discount that I would like. Um, okay. So we've got all that going. We added tax specifically for our Canadian users um, in here, but you can also use that tax if you, uh, say, do credit card processing fees and you wanna uh, put that into the amount. Um, in the United States, services aren't taxable, but a lot of inspectors try to get around uh, the credit card processing fees by putting them on the clients. So you can use that tax and repurpose that um, in order to have that going. Cool, so we're gonna continue scrolling down here. Um, the system will default to require payment to release the report. So you're, the client and the agent are not going to be able to see the reports until you get paid for your work. Um, if you have a circumstance like a pay at close that you would like um, to be able to pay later and get that report to the agent, you can uncheck this box. And now you're gonna, they're going to be able to see that. 
Um, the other system default is if there is an unsigned agreement um, on the inspection, they cannot view the report either. They will be pumped back to the client agent portal where they will need to sign the agreement before they can see the report. Um, that part you cannot override. Um, what you would have to do is delete the agreement um, in order to release the report. Um, cool, so now we're scrolling down. And this client's agent area, since so many more agents um, are reused um, with referrals um, than the clients, we actually built in an auto-populating feature to this client's agent area. So um, say we have, I believe Kevin, who's one of our other founders in here, um, is, uh, he's right there, he's one of our clients. Uh, we click in here. Now it's going to pre-populate his phone number, his address, his email, all that stuff, so you don't have to re-enter it. Um, if you also have a sales agent, um, uh, listing agent, sorry, um, in here, if you don't already have them in here, you can click, and Alexis is the other girl who helps on tech support, um, and you would, she would be able to be added on here. Now, I know it's illegal in uh, a lot of states to directly send the listing agent the report, um, so we don't actually have that functionality with Inspectora, so that nobody else gets in trouble. Um, and so you'll be able to send the report directly to your client's agent, just not directly to your listing agent. If you get permission from your um, client's agent to share it with the listing agent, uh, then we've got a couple different functionalities where you can manually do that. Um, cool, uh, so we're gonna scroll down. Order ID, this is another frequently asked question. Um, the way Spectora does it is it essentially adds plus one to whatever you have in here. So a lot of inspectors wanted to reset uh, their order ID number for the new year and you could just go in here and make this inspection one and then the next time you go to schedule an inspection, it'll go plus one and now the order ID will be two. Um, I also get a lot of newer inspectors who frankly want to hide the fact that they're a newer inspector. And so instead of having an order ID one, two, three, four, or five, they'll make their order ID something completely random and be like number 251 in there. So you can choose to do that as well. Um, disable automatic or automated notifications, excuse me, will turn off the automatic emails that you have set in your automations area. So in this case, it would disable the confirmation email, you can always trigger it later, um, and all the reminder stuff and the follow-up. Um, again, you can turn that all back on later, uh, but if you say had an inspection that you weren't sure if it was really gonna happen and you didn't wanna send that confirmation email out, you can choose to disable the notifications here in scheduling. Um, you can also add internal notes. And these are actually visible on the app. This is great if you have office staff that knows what the lockbox code is and you don't wanna to have to juggle back and forth between, between your email or text messages. Um, these will display right underneath the cover picture on your app. So you can put you know, lockbox code, one, two, three, four, um, in there and that'll display so you've got a little cheat once you get on site. So now we're gonna hit, we're gonna save inspection. And what the system is gonna do now is it's gonna save it and then pull up the agreement in the template and create uh, your inspection portal. So now to find the inspection now that we have scheduled it, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. If you scheduled it for today, you'll find it in this today box. If you scheduled it for another day, if we scroll down, the one I technically scheduled um, is here on the calendar and you can find it here. You can also go up and the menu of your name up here is actually a drop down menu and you can click into inspections here and there's this, actually a search bar function in there where you can search by client's name, by order number, uh, by email address. Um, so you can use that inspections tab to find your inspections. So now we scroll down. Um, one thing that I always like to point out to people about this dashboard scheduler is you can actually click on a date and choose an event. And so if you don't have one of our integrated calendars on here, um, iCal or um, Google Calendar, you can actually schedule time off within this app, uh, within this schedule, and when you add it, if you have any of our um, 
scheduling with your availability setup, it will actually block off that period of time. So you don't have anyone scheduling you for an inspection on your time off. Um, okay, that's uh, the in progress area. It's all of your unpublished inspections. So you can easily scroll down and say, oh shoot, I haven't sent that one to the client. Um, you can also click this all inspections button and it'll do the same thing as the drop down menu of your name and open it up. Okay, so now we're gonna click into the inspection that you uh, and I just scheduled. And we're gonna open it up here. So now this is what we call the inspection details page. It's purely inspector facing. This is what you and your office staff see, not what the client sees. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, these time and date and address bars are actually clickable and that's how you would go about rescheduling an inspection. Or if you click this address, you can edit the property details with, oh, I put in the wrong zip code. Um, if you later find out that the square footage is actually 11,000 feet or something like that, um, and number of bedrooms, parking lot size, always make sure you hit save. You can actually also access that um, sorry about the slow internet. As soon as I do screen share with more than 10 people, which we're up to like 14 right now, um, my internet slows down a little bit. Um, you can actually also access that property details by going to more and then property details. This more drop down is one of the most commonly missed things uh, that we get on the text report chapable where people don't know um, that they can reschedule through there. You can share the inspection details. That'll get that the client portal to them. Um, canceling will take it off of your calendar and take you off of it as an inspector, but it will still save all the data um, in there so you can later reschedule it and not have to re-enter the client's information. Um, you can also completely delete it if you don't need that information anymore, or you can print the order. Um, now, we'll do client's view here in a second. Um, here is the people box. You can add more people. Um, Clients number two, since we've already added a whole bunch of people in here, um, is the only one that we could add. Uh, but say we put in the, an incorrect uh, email for the client's agent over here. I would hit these three little dots and I can edit. Oh, that was a good example because he's actually a real person. Um, but you can, you can edit these three little dots over here and you'd be able to edit or resend the confirmation email or you can remove them as people. Um, all right, templates to reports. This is a very commonly confused uh, concept and that's fine. It took Mike a couple times of explaining it to me before I got it. So the template is your master cookie cutter. It's your master blank that all of your individual inspection reports are built from. Um, the way he likes to describe it is the template is a date stamp. And if you stamp the date out onto a piece of paper, um, when you change the template or the date stamp, it's not gonna change what's on the piece of paper. So if you make any changes to your template, make sure you come in over here and regenerate the reports. Um, I always like to describe it because I like cookies, to be honest with you, that um, if you stamp a cookie out with a cookie cutter, as soon as that cookie stamped out, if you bend the cookie cutter, it's not gonna change the way the cookie looks. Yeah. I like cookies. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we will auto build the report from the template for you at 3 a.m. the morning of the inspection. So you don't have to go in and do it. If before the morning of the inspection, you would like to go in and edit your report, um, you can click these three little dots over here and hit build now. And then it'll take a couple minutes to generate the report. Um, but when it's ready, you'll be able to come back here and edit and view. We'll keep going for now. Um, also, if you have, if you wanted to add a, a report from a different template, you could always hit this plus new button and add more templates. Um, Florida is usually the, uh, the most reports per inspection. I see a lot of fours with four point when it, um, a residential inspection and off the top of my head, I'm blanking on the fourth one, but there's usually four for them down there. Alrighty. Um, if we scroll down here, you can edit the services and fees. Um, you can hit these three little dots, edit services and fees. You can mark the entire thing as paid, although if you do want to keep track of how people paid, either by check or cash or something like that, 
you can actually click into here instead of marking it as paid and you can add a payment received and add it as check, uh, cash, on-site, other. This, that functionality is actually also really good if you have two different people helping pay for the inspection. Is you can add, oh, uh, they paid with my swiper on-site $400 of the inspection, and now they're gonna go on later and pay the extra 125. Um, and then always make sure when you scroll down here, you hit save. Um, I've got a series of YouTube videos called the setup series um, that go into a lot of this a lot deeper, particularly that edit fees section. Um, and so there's a, uh, there's a video for that to break it down if I'm going too fast, which I, I fully realize I'm going very, very fast right now. This is supposed to be the overview and then we'll get a little bit deeper with the questions. Um, okay, attachments. Um, these will show up in the client portal. Usually um, there's something like if you don't want a standards of practice in your reports, but you still want to attach your standards of practice, um, or if your market requires a certificate of inspection, you can put it in there. Um, actually, I've been seeing a lot of people add a list of recommended contractors, if that's a thing for your market. Um, some market, you're not allowed to recommend contractors because it's um, unethical. Um, and so you can add, if you can, you can add an attachment up here. You can change the order ID, add a different referral source, or edit the referral source in there, um, change lockbox code, all that information stuff down here. You can add a service if you upsell them, say on the phone, and now they do want radon, you can just hit that and it'll pull in the template that you've got preset. Um, agreements, another FAQ. Agreements will not regenerate automatically if you change the client's data or add fees or something like that. Um, this it's for legal reasons. Um, so if you change any of the client's data or the fees after you have scheduled the inspection and the agreements are pre-populated, you'll need to click these three dots, delete, and then click up here and add a new agreement and that will refresh and repopulate your agreement. Um, cool. Uh, it looks like Chuck typed in, when they do partial pay, does it unlock the report for view? Not until all of it is paid, um, unless you go in here and hit these three buttons and mark it as paid. So partial pay will keep it locked until you're fully paid. Um, and then um, if you want to release the report, you can mark it as paid completely or lock until paid. So there are a couple different options, but partial pay does not release the report just for one person. Um, which leads me to, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, that, that little chat bubble over there. If you guys have questions, feel free to chime in too, since it's hard to loop back sometimes and remember. Um, okay, client view. So the way our system works is we try to keep things as simple and all in the same place for the client and the agent. So when you schedule an inspection, you will trigger the confirmation email to go out. And that confirmation email is going to hold the link um, to the client agent portal, which looks like this. Um, you'll notice, I mean, this <laughs> I should have changed the logo before we did this uh, webinar, but this logo up here will actually be your logo. It's whatever logo is in the client profile, or, or in, excuse me, your company profile. Frankly, because your client and your agent don't need to know what the Spectora logo is and it's confusing to them. So this will be your logo up here. Then if we scroll down here, picture of street, map, all that good stuff. And then if there's outstanding agreements, they can go in here and view and accept. They can add a payment if you've got a payment portal. Um, <laughs> normally there's more words in there. Um, we do currently only have checkbox, which is uh, backed by the federal e-sign law. And so it is legally binding throughout the United States. Um, there's a couple countries that we currently have users in that need, require signature and uh, US law does not apply to them. Um, and for those people, unfortunately, you're gonna have to use DocuSign or something like that. I also really like Genius Scan as an app. Um, also part of our awesome new uh, mobile release that's coming here shortly, is going to be the ability to sign the agreements on your app um, or have your client do it rather, not you. Uh, but so you would check it and then hit submit. You can also print up here. So now let's go back. And ultimately when all of your agreements are um, signed and the payment is uh, accepted, 
your reports will also be in this area. So your clients and agents don't have to worry about having a login or multiple links to go to. They know everything is in this one um, portal. I have seen a lot more uh, inspectors who want to impress their agents and their clients and make it easier to understand recording videos, even if it's just on their iPhone, um, of an ex explanation of the client portal and a brief overview of the report. Getting your face in front of the client and making sure that they're really feeling taken care of and that they're not lost at all in any step of the way has really gotten some of these inspectors more referrals, which is great for business. Um, so that's just a, a fun little tip and trick. All right, so now let's go, I've got to go back a couple times. We're back to the inspection details page over here. Um, Tony asks, is attached into place for the radon report PDF? So actually, I would recommend attaching it up here as a report. So the difference would be, this would show up as a report button in the client agent view. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like um, because it's way better to do the visuals. So I don't have to go in and sign these. I'm just going to delete the um, reports off of this real quick. Uh, but you would attach it as a, um, nah, this is taking too long, whatever. Um, you would attach it on there and it would be a button for a report versus put down where the uh, invoice and other attachments are. I can show you that portion of it. So it would either be up here as a button or down here in additional documents. And so if you have it in the attachments area, it would show up in additional documents. And if you add it as a report, it'll show up here as a button. Sorry, that was very convoluted. Way to stick with it. <laughs> um, okay. So what else do we got? Um, we're going to get into desktop report editor. So if we click into edit this report, um, we have all sorts of templates for you guys in the template center, but most inspectors take the time and really customize their language. So when you're going through this, the base uh, um, template that we have is the InterNACHI systems-based, um, but we also have the ASHI one in there. We've got the InterNACHI room by room. We've got four point, wind mitt, um, mold, and then some of our awesome inspectors, actually more than 30 of them have actually shared their templates um, in the template center. And I'll show you where that is here in a second. Um, and you can go through and download their templates for free into your account and keep with them and see if you really like their detached garage checks in or something like that. Okay, so this is the desktop report editor. You are not limited to this. And I do wanna be clear about this because at San Diego Inspection World, this was one of the questions that I most frequently got there was you're going to schedule the inspection here on Spectorum. You can also do it in the app, but like I said, it's a light scheduler. Then you're going to go on site. You can, because we license per user and not per device, each inspector can go through and use their phone for the crawl space and iPad for um, the rest of the inspection and then can come back here to a laptop and can finish the report online. Um, about 95% of, excuse me, Mo the majority of our inspectors finish about 95% of their reports on site. Um, and then that extra 5% is the tinkering and proofreading before they send it to the client. Um, so this is where you would do that 5% of tinkering and proofreading. Um, as we go through here, um, you can see we've got some good, pull in the chat down, cool. Um, you can see we've got the different sections here. So this is the InterNACHI systems-based one. So if we click into roof, these biggest areas of data are called sections. Within each section, we have different items, such as um, roof drainage or flashings. When we click into here, these buttons up top here are actually completely customizable. You can keep them like this so that um, currently we're in the classic rating systems of the only comments that will show down here below will be the ones that are linked to the buttons up here. So we've got inspected, so you've got your informational items. Now not inspected, such as there was a limitation here to your inspection, there was snow on the roof, I couldn't inspect it, or not present, this house doesn't have any flashings, would also show up the, those as limitations. 
you can customize this fourth, fourth um, category, defect recommendation observations are usually the ones that I see the most. Um, and you can select that. Now, if you find a defect, it's automatically going to select inspected because the only way you found a defect is if you inspected it. Now, this is good, uh, a good format for the inspectors who want to minimize clicks. Um, the negative side of it is, is that it's not very customizable. And if you're in a market where, say, um, you could have partial um, inspected, where you would both want to see the comments for inspected and not inspected, such as there's snow on the roof, but I could only, uh, but I could still inspect half of it. Um, you'd actually want to go into your template and change it over the custom ratings, where you can have up to eight of those buttons, name them everything that they or anything that you want. The negative is because you're customizing them, we don't actually know what you want them to link to. So the informational, the limitation, and the red um, defect comments would all display for all buttons. You can also choose to completely turn these buttons off. And I am actually seeing a trend in the industry um, where more and more people are getting away from that grid view um, and going to a more narrative-based report. Um, so we've got a couple different options depending on how you like to inspect. Um, it is important to note that we are different from other softwares um, and frankly why agents love us is we don't give any of the superfluous information in the reports. We only show active comments. So this material section is a great place to display that. Now I've got flashings, we're in roof flashings and now I'm talking about the material. If I select aluminum on the reports, aluminum is the only one that's going to show up. You're not gonna have this asphalt, copper, rubber, lead, foam. Those are not gonna show up. It creates a much more condensed and more easy to read report. And that's uh, why agents love our reports. One of the reasons, but still. Um, if you need an informational comment in here and you don't see it, you can always click um, this plus info button and create a new comment. Um, if you, this is something that's coming up often and you would like to um, add it to your report, you can click this save template for future use and it will save to your template, which is great. And you can change the answer format. Multiple choice, date, number range, um, a couple of our more specific, I think it's down in Texas, uh, forms require the uh, client signature on site and you can use that signature or a text box. Then make sure you hit save. Uh, quick enough. Perfect. Okay, so now down in the defect area, we check one of these to activate it. So now we've got some um, major, or excuse me, minor corroded on here for your flashings. These are your defect categories. You can choose to have up to three of them, a uh, minimum of one. We did a polling of agents and they actually found that more than three was highly confusing and they didn't like it. So um, it seems that gone are the days of having multiple, up to five different categories on there. Um, the ones that they actually liked the most were two, the orange recommendations of stuff that should be fixed by a professional or the red safety hazard. They found that these, this blue category, which is normally um, DIY or stuff the homeowner can do, while it's nice for the homeowner to know it, um, they don't really actually need to know that in the summary of the report, which is really where these defect categories come in handy. So you can choose to have that be included. Um, I would say the majority of our Spectora users do use all three categories. Um, and you can name those whatever you like. You are stuck with the colors and the icons, however, though. Um, okay. So um, this location box, you can either click it and type or in your settings, you can set up pre-defaulted buttons by clicking this pencil, and you can say first floor, east bedroom. A weird place for roof flat flashings, but it's fun. And then you can hit save location. Um, perfect. You can also go in here, and uh, some inspectors like to use all the fancy colors. You can, if you have a particular contractor or say a YouTube video, of how this comment should be addressed. You can use this chain link icon and add a URL to like a YouTube video um, or a website for it. I recommend you fixing it with this uh, roofing contractor. 
And then this text area is going to be what displays to the client. Um, and then you can choose to whether or not you want it to open in a new tab or replace the report page that you're on. And then you would hit insert. Um, the other fun buttons that we have are you can change the fonts, you can change um, italic, bold, underline the color, order list, bullets. Um, you can insert uh, a picture or a video directly into this text. You can add a table and then this little um, eraser does clear formatting. If you copy and paste it um, from another uh, website, um, I would highly recommend clearing the formatting um, to get everything looking Spectora good. Then this recommendation down here is actually what, who you're choosing to address the defects. Um, we keep these deliberately general because we don't want anyone to get in trouble, frankly. And some people require the word license, some people require the word, some people, excuse me, some states require the word license, other uh, need the word qualified. So we deliberately kept these as um, vague as possible so that no one would get in trouble. Um, the, you can either choose no recommendation or if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's actually quite a few on here. We do take submissions uh, for this list. We just added solar contractor for one of our inspectors um, in California. But you do have qualified professional, which is probably the most used uh, recommendation that I see, um, or DIY, just telling the homeowner that they can do it themselves or the potential homeowner. Um, then if you would like to provide a cost estimate, um, you can turn that feature on or off. People are, I, I never knew this, but a lot of inspectors are very uh, polarized by giving estimates. Um, some love it, some hate it. If you have it turned on, you can check that box and you can use the slider to um, choose how much you think that would cost. Um, photo adding. There are two different ways on the desktop report ed editor, excuse me, to um, add a photo. You can hit this plus photo button and it will pull up an uploader. Oop, my chat's in the way. Cancel. Or if you have a finder open, um, that's what it's called on Macs. It's also just a file folder. Um, let me choose a good picture real quick. You can take the picture and you can drag and drop into the white area underneath the comments. And you can drag and drop multiple pictures in, the, in there at, the, um, at one time. Now that the photo has uploaded in here, you can actually click this photo and it will pull up our photo annotator. On here, you can use just your mouse and it will default to whatever severity rating you give it. So it, if it was just in an informational comment, it would be defaulted to green. Um, the blue, red, orange would be connected to your defect categories. So currently this um, defect is a safety hazard and you could click and drag with your cursor and create the arrows that you need. You could change the color and you could make a green circle. Um, you can also add captions um, I want to be clear, it does not display on the picture. It will display above the picture or below the picture on your report, um, depending on how much text you have in there. So it's a true caption, not an inlay overlay of uh, text. Um, that currently is not honestly possible in our photo plugin editor, is a plugin that we use. Um, then make sure you hit this save button. Reoccurring theme, hit the save button. Okay, so now that's going to save. And now we've got those annotations on here. Um, okay, so now once we've done a, a couple things in here, since that's basically the basics, we can hit this preview publish button and it's going to pull up our web report. Um, these web reports um, are the way that we believe the industry is going mostly because agents and clients are on the go. And so a printed PDF or even a PDF that they have to resize with their fingers um, is frankly not as functional as these web reports that are automatically going to be um, uh, accessible in any web browser that they have the link for. Um, and then they will resize to your screen. So you're automatically gonna have a better display um, on there. Um, I get this question a lot from new inspectors. These three buttons are only visible to you as the inspector because you're logged in. Um, you can test this by opening up a private or incognito window where your browser will not recognize that you're a logged in inspector. 
but so your agent and your clients will not see these three buttons. Um, you can choose on your reports whether or not you would like these bubbles up here for items inspected is going to be the number of informational items that you have filled out. Um, and then you can also have a bubble for each of your um, defects that you've selected. Um, you can add a header in your uh, template um, to put in your scope of your inspection. You can add a description of how to read the report. You can color customize it. You can add thank you for your business in there, all your legal disc disclaimer stuff, um, all that good stuff down here. Um, then we will get into these inspection details. Um, if you have the standards of practice set to pull in, it will be a standards tab um, that you can click on. So these are tabs. And then since you have not published this report yet, if you're like, oh shoot, I spelled something wrong in here, you can actually use what's called the quick edit and you can hit this edit section button and it will do a link back to where you need to go in the report editor and it will pull up that exact comment and section and so that you do not need to actually go through and click back and forth and figure out where you are at. Just a fun little um, tip. So then if you are ready to publish it, um, you can either use these three dot, oh, nope, you can't. See, even I forget things. Preview publish, we're gonna go here. You can either publish from the inspection details page or you can hit publish from here. And what Publish is gonna do is it's gonna pull up your different options um, to send the uh, client an email, agent an email, the text message, and your options here are gonna be based off of first, what you have set in your automations area. Um, and so if you don't have the agent emails turned on at all, you won't see them in here. Secondly, the system is gonna look at and see if you actually have an email put in for the clients. And so if you don't have an email for that agent, you also won't see the agent email up here. So it's a smart system. Now, um, if you don't want anything going to this agent, you can uncheck it. You can also hit this edit button and pull up the preview of your um, confirmation, or excuse me, your report ready email. Um, Publish is going to send this report ready email out and it contains a link to view your report. Um, and again, if there's no signed agreement on there or there's outstanding payment and you haven't authorized it to be viewed without payment, um, when they click that link, they're gonna be sent back to that client portal where it's gonna say, you need to sign your agreement or you need to pay. Um, so there is not a way to view the report uh, from the client agent view uh, without doing those things. Um, I do highly recommend um, if you have an interaction with the client or the agent on site, um, clicking into this report, and um, the most common laughable one that I use is, I liked your dog. Something to make sure that you know that there was a personal connection between the two and that it's not just an automated email. Now you don't have to do this, and particularly for the time efficient guys, you don't need to add that. But you can edit and type all that stuff in there. Um, then when you are done, you just hit send all, and it will send all um, of the options that you have a checkbox for. Um, and that's gonna trigger those emails to go out. Report published, hooray. All right, so now we're gonna go back. Um, and it's gonna send us out to this dashboard area, or you can just hit the back button and it'll take you to the web report. Um, one thing I do wanna point out to you guys are these little, actually there's like three things. Um, these icons are live, so you can see that I have not signed my agreement on here. I have not accepted payment, but I have published it. So you can have a quick cheat sheet on here of what's happening with the inspection. Those are also available up on the inspections tab. But um, in this email and text message day and age, there's also sometimes human error, shockingly enough, where they don't give a correct email address or a correct phone number. You can scroll down here and there's two boxes, emails and text messages, and you can actually see all of the emails and text messages that you have sent out for this inspection in our system. Now this one is showing delivered because I did put the correct address in there, because it's mine. Um, but you'd be able to see a red bounced or a failure to delivery, something like that. Um, and if you actually click this and open it up, you will see a preview of the email 
I'm, it's not really a preview since it's already sent, but you know where I'm going with that. But if you scroll down, you can actually see all of the different events, we call them, um, that this email has gone through. So it was processed and then it was delivered. If there was a bounce or an incorrect email, you'd actually be able to go in here and say, oh, it looks like the privacy settings for the recipient's email bounced me into spam and rejected the email. Oh, I better call, better call them up and have them add me to their safe sender list so I don't get to send to spam. Or, oh, it looks like that email address is invalid. So this is a really handy way to troubleshoot if you have a client or an agent that um, has not received their emails or their reports. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of the inspection details page. Um, let's actually jump into templates now. I'm gonna do it on time. Pretty good. All right, templates. Most commonly question, uh, common question that I get asked um, when people are investigating our software is what templates we have available. Are they editable? Uh, do we set up templates for people? Things like that. So if you actually click into this templates tab or you can click into this uh, or the drop down menu of your name and go to templates, if we click into this template center, this is all of our pre-populated Spectora templates and um, the ones that our wonderful inspectors have chosen to share. So we're gonna have the uh, four point, the uh, room by room, InterNACHI, Radon, um, Trek, which will populate to the proper Trek PDF. Um, since Texas is crazy with the regulations. Um, and then we can scroll down. And then you can see these community shared templates of uh, an inspector from St. Augustine, Florida, who's chosen to share their pre-drywall template. And so you can get, kind of get a feel for different places around the country, but you would just click one of these and say, I wanna pull it in, and you would add a template to the report. Um, you can also, um, whoever shared it, their contact information that's listed in their Spectora profile is put up here. So if you have any questions or wanted to just give them a good old compliment, you can reach out to them and do it. Um, okay, so now we're going to go back to our template editor. And I'm going to do the most commonly asked questions in here. Um, this is by no means a, a, a deeper overview of what you can do. Um, that didn't make any sense. It's an overview, it's not a deep dive. Okay, so to access template settings, we're going to click into the template title. This name up here is the name that you and your company see. This friendly display name is what's going to be the name of the button that the client and the agent clicks to see their report. So usually something like residential report or your company name and residential report instead of the InterNACHI template. Um, active or not active is if this template is one that you want to be able to pull into the mobile app. Um, if you just have a template you're screwing around with and tinkering, um, then you don't actually need this to be on. And the fewer templates that you have active, the more efficient your app is gonna run. Same thing with the um, number of reports that you have loaded and saved onto your app. Um, the basic overview of that is uh, when you edit your inspection on your uh, app, all that data saves onto the app. That's how it's able to function without internet. Um, and then you save it up to the web and that's how we publish it out to the client. Um, but because the data saves to the app, same thing with the templates, if you have a lot of data stored onto your app, it's, I'm gonna tell a bunch of stories today apparently, um, it's the same as like running with books. You're gonna be able to run efficiently with you know, two, three, four books held in your hand. But if you try to run with 10 templates and 30 reports on there, you're probably gonna stumble, you might wanna trip, and your app's probably gonna um, you know, run a little bit slower. So make sure you keep your app cleaned up. Um, okay, so active and inactive. This header text area is actually where you would uh, put all that uh, disclaimer text in here if you wanted to describe what each of your de defect categories are. Um, the full report header text will go on the web report and the full report PDF. The summary header text goes on the summary PDF. Um, it will not go on the summary of the web report because they would need to click past the full report header text to even view the summary. So you're still legally covered. Okay, keep scrolling down. We've got display options. Um, we've got whether or not you want to display those bubbles um, of 
on top of the reports, these guys with the items inspected, observation, safety hazards. So the items inspected be, would be the green informational comments, the category counts would be all of your three different or however many defect categories you have. Um, you can display your inspector signature and that would show up right on the report underneath your um, face and your name. Um, you can enable this and then go into your um, inspector profile and upload it. Um, I actually re recommend a site called mylivesignature.com. It's old school from the 90s, but it does its job and it's free and it generates a really good uh, professional looking PDF. Um, I do not recommend signing a piece of paper and then taking a picture and trying to upload it. The background is almost never the correct white to go on there. So you end up having like a weird yellow signature display and it doesn't look very professional. So JPEG, mylabsignature.com. Um, standards of practice, some people include them in the reports. Some people include a um, separate attachment for it. Uh, recommendations are the um, who you want to solve the uh, defect. So you can just turn those off if you don't want to give any of those. Smart layout. Um, the basics of smart layout is you can choose whether or not you want to minimize white space or have the comments within particular items display in the order that you have them in the report. If you have smart layout turned on, it will resort your comments once you are done with the report. Um, based off of text size and how many pictures that you have. So instead of having a small comment and then a large photo comment and then it's got to skip to the next line to do another small comment, it would group all of your small comments together, then it would group all of your single photos together, then it would group all of your longer text comments and your multiple picture comments in there. Um, and what that does is it minimizes white space. So you're going for a shorter report um, but many inspectors also like to have it A, B, C, D done. Um, so you can just disable smart layout. PDF options, if you want the table of contents in there, if you want to display the summary, uh, page breaks, uh, page break inside of comments, um, that would be if a comment would be separated onto two pages. Um, again, these last two options are for if you want white space or not. Um, it's up to your personal preference. This defect label is whatever you're naming your bad stuff, your red stuff. Um, I think I said this earlier, but the most common ones I see are defects, uh, recommendation, or observation um, in there. And so you can change that to whatever you want. Um, I covered this a little bit in the, uh, uh, the uh, report editor, but these item ratings are going to be that grid that's displayed. Now, you can also choose to have the grid be inspector facing so that you know what you've inspected, um, but it doesn't actually display on the report. So there's a couple different display options on there. Um, classic rating, custom rating, I kind of gave you the brief rundown on there. You can also, if you're in classic ratings, choose to have um, one of the buttons pre-populated. Usually it's blank, but you can have it set to inspected or not inspected so that you know you have to go through and hit the button. Uh, defect categories, I was telling you about this earlier with the ability to choose one, two, three categories and name it whatever you want. Um, I pre-populated these with the kind of most common ones of deferred maintenance, monitor, I see a lot of DIY for this one. Um, orange is usually recommendation or needs action by a qualified professional, something like that. And then red is usually major, major safety hazard or major defect. Um, if you, you can have all of them included in the summary, which is just the wrap up of all of your defects. Um, or you can choose to only have two of the three categories or something like that. Make sure you have it. Okay, more basics. These icons I get a lot of questions about. Pencil will open up and you will be able to change the title, choose if there's a grid for that section, change the icon, change between an optional and an included in every report um, section. So included in every report will build every single time. You can also build things like detached garages, pools, um, things that don't happen on every single house. So they're built out in your template, um, but they're there if you need them. And so you would just grab them into a report when you need them by hitting the plus new section button on either the app or the uh, report editor. Um, and then one of your options, it'll be blank section, and then the next one under it will be optional sections. And you can select to pull in from your whole template. So that's nice. Um, you can also change your standards of practice up here or add reminders, um, which is nice.
So if I close out of this guy, um, double paper is actually a duplicate. So you can hit this double paper icon and then you can choose to either duplicate inside the, the same template here or you can choose to send this entire section over to a different template, which is great for template editing, particularly if you're building your own template and you wanna grab a couple sections from any of the pre-populated templates that we have in the template center. So you can say, yep, I really like that roof section, bring it over to my other new one. Um, now, once you've imported a section to a new comment or to a new template, excuse me, you can use this flowchart icon to take this item and say, oh, I don't want that in the exterior. I actually want that in basement, structural, whatever. And you can move it. So you can move entire items between sections. You will also see this flowchart icon and you can open it up and you can move the comment to a different section or item. So within each template, you've got a lot of rearranging options and then between templates, you can move sections. Um, other common questions. Uh, delete, you can click these arrows to drag to reorder. Um, you can also open, um, well, these little uh, icons over here, the checkbox, the um, multiple choice are clues about what kind of comment it is. So you can hit this new button and you can choose to have a checkbox, yes, no, uh, multiple choice, date range, all these good stuff and name it in here. So you've got a bunch of different options in there. Um, you can do the same thing and do plus new section or item. Um, a lot of people miss this default attachments area down here. If you have something like a PDF of your standards of practice that you want included every time this temp template is stamped out, you can add it in here. And whenever you add this template to a report, it will pull that PDF um, into the client portal for you. So you don't have to go back and manually do it every single time. Um, okay, Chuck, I'm gonna get to your question really quick. Ooh, you guys were typing in a bunch of stuff. Okay, I had it minimized. Um, okay, so we're actually gonna go over to automation and I'll talk about the text messages and where they come from and where they go here shortly. Um, okay, so it looks like Two of the three, two of the four. Um, oh, nice. Thanks for sharing that URL, Tony, about the um, YouTube uh, Spectora page, which is great. Um, check out the setup series. All right, for Chuck and Travis, and I think, okay, for, so for Chuck and Travis, they, Chuck has a question about when we send an automatic text message, where does it come from and where do they reply to? Um, and then same thing with Travis asked about the email address. So in your automated area, automations area, you can change the template for all of your um, emails and your text messages in here. So if we click into this pre-inspection, you can see that you can change the text messages and the emails here. You can choose who the emails go out from. Either you choose your company or your inspector. And you would do that by clicking in the email settings and then point of contact here. And then you would click open and you can choose either inspector or company. Um, that would be the inspector assigned to the inspection for that one. Um, if you're a multi-inspector company, I usually see the company email being used and that company email is what's gonna be listed in the company profile, Inspectora. Um, so the way the emails work, is it comes from your, we're a third party sender, but we send it through your email. So if they reply to that, you will get it in your inbox. Now there is no way for us to third party send text messages. So they're gonna be sent from our Spectora number. And what you would do to get around that, if you want to get, be able to do replies, is in your edit template for this pre-inspection reminder text message, when it pulls up, is this add your inspector name and inspector phone number. Um, usually I see people editing it and saying, um, if you would like to reply to this text message or need to tell me anything, make sure you apply to this number and they put their own inspector phone number. Um, so that's just the workaround. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see what other questions I missed in here. Casey, my YouTube URL and design appear to contain your detailed videos, where are they? Um, there should be a playlist tab in the Spectora YouTube 
you click uh, playlist, the very first one should be the setup series. You should also be able to see a, a, some of them broken apart um, in the different sections. Um, okay, Craig, if you start the inspection on your phone and then switch to your tablet and you have connection, will it synchronize the information from each device? Okay, so yes, and that's super exciting. So you would take the information on your phone and you would hit the save button and that will save all your information up to the server. Then there's a sync button that will pull down that information from the server onto your tablet. So you would save your information up from your phone and then hit sync on your tablet and it will pull down the information. So yep, you can synchronize all the data on there. Um, obviously not applicable if you don't have internet connection, uh, but will work for save sync between devices when you do. Cool. Uh, Rick says, when creating informational items in the template, if you select a date type, do you have to type a specific date or does it allow me to choose month or year or year as options? It actually pulls up a calendar. So you can choose, um, I think you have to choose a, a day, month, year um, for the calendar. So if you just wanted to do month or year, I would actually recommend doing um, a number uh, field instead of a date range. And then you can just type in 2019. Uh, can you show what the report looks to the client? For Steve, sure can. Um, it was that web report that I was showing you. It doesn't look any different, but I can do that. So if we do dashboard, um, and then we go down here. Oop. Sorry, doing too many things at once. Open this guy up. If we hit you, this web report besides these three buttons is the web report that will be clients and the agents will see. Um, every web report also contains a PDF button over here where you can click it and do the summary PDF or the full report PDF. So this is what the client will see. Cool. Uh, what else we got? Uh, if you talked about the recommendation spot, you can choose multiple options. Um, no, currently it's only one. Um, if you would like to um, choose multiple recommendations such as Carpenter and a Masoner, um, you could always leave it blank in that recommendations area and put both of those in the default text for that client. So that's my workaround for you. Cool, all right, I think I'm caught up on questions. All right, back to the teaching of things. Once I figure out and wrangle this chat bubble. Cool, okay, down here. All right, so automated emails and text message, text messages and the agreements, which you can access by going to your settings, and I'll go through the settings here real shortly. Um, if we click into this automations area, one of the great time-saving features that we have at Spectora is the ability to have us pull pieces of data from your inspection scheduling and from your inspection details page um, into uh, your emails and text messages so you don't have to retype them every time. That's why they're automated. So if we go into this inspection confirmation for the um, email for the clients and we edit the template, you will see these curly Q bracket things that the coders call, call value placeholders or placeholders. And we have given you a handy dandy list over here of these orange buttons so that you don't have to take a guess and try to type these out. Um, so this one will obviously do client first name. You can also do client name if you want the full one, address, inspection date, inspection time. Um, the link, the fees, will do a fees breakdown of uh, $100 for the residential and $20 for the radon, um, whatever it is. You know, that'll do a breakdown. Um, the inspection link will take you to the client agent portal. Um, I highly recommend you keep that one in here um, so that when you confirm your inspection, your clients and agents can click that link and that's what's gonna take them to the portal to sign the agreement and pay you. Um, there are a couple different options that you can use, particularly for the report ready email. If you would like to have the um, inspection link to take them back to the portal, or you can choose to use the report link, the summary PDF, the report PDF, these other options down here with invoice link, and it will take them directly to those particular things instead of straight to the portal and then they can jump from there. Um, I'm seeing more and more inspectors 
um, have click here for the client portal, and then slightly lower say, if you would like to view the PDF of it, click here. And so you give both options. Um, yeah, so you can customize those in here. And wherever your cursor, so the little blinky guy, um, is pointed is where this placeholder, when you click it, is going to populate. So say, let me know if you have any questions, and then this is, you wanna add the client's first name there. You would click that, and you'll see this jumps and populates. Now you can also copy and paste it wherever you'd like. Um, okay, and then make sure you hit save email template. Um, okay, uh, let's see if I missed any other questions. Nope, still caught up. Cool. All right, so we're gonna scroll back up. And for scheduling, you can have emails only. No text messages for scheduling, unfortunately. But you can have a different one for the clients, the uh, client's agent, listing agent. And if you reschedule, you can have an automated email go out. Um, inspection agreements or fees are if you add a new one to let them know that there's an action item required to go on and sign or go on and pay you a different amount. Pre-inspection is when the text messages and uh, or the text messages come into play. You can have up to three emails and two text messages for each of these three guys. Um, report ready can be sent to the client and the client's agent in either email or text form or both. And then for these post inspections, this is where I highly recommend you guys grab the links to your um, Yelp and Google My Business um, sites directly to the form, not even to your profile. The, when you click the I wanna leave a review button, grab that URL or web, web link and put them into your reviews. There are so many times where people are so happy that um, you guys did a great inspection, a great report, and they're willing to leave that review, but if you add four more steps, they're gonna be like, I, I gotta go get, pick up the kids at soccer practice, like I'm not doing it anymore. So make sure you minimize the amount of clicks. Let's get you guys those great reviews. We have found the best combination, and obviously this could be different for your market, is um, the first follow-up email going out the evening of that inspection. So if you publish on sites, you would do it for two or three hours after the inspection, or one day after the inspection when they've actually had time to sit down and look at their report. Um, and then seven days after, give them a week. And then the third follow-up is kind of a 50-50 split between people. They either do it 30 days afterward, or you can actually set it for the year or view mark so that people are like, oh yeah, it's been a year, I do need another home inspection. And you can have an automatically generated email to go out to them to say, you're ready for a new inspection? Um, and get you guys that um, inspection back. Cool. Um, that's a brief overview of the automated section. Um, you can also look at the email queues and emails that are, uh, are uh, the queues for text messages and emails that are going to be sent out. So if you have additional information for one particular client, you can click into the email queue um, and change stuff in there for them. Um, contacts, very briefly. Um, you can import. Um, we have importers built for both Excel files. There's more information in here and imports. And then we have a special ISN importer if you guys are transitioning over from ISN to Spectora. Um, we also have an export function. This is great for our MailChimp integration or if you guys want a list of um, who your agents are for Christmas cards. Um, or you can click add an agent. This clients button is actually a clickable button and that's how you switch between your agents and your clients. Um, and for the agents, you can see how many inspections that they've done as a client's agent or as a selling agent. You can add an agency for them. Um, you can add more fields in here like address if you would like um, by clicking edit. And then you can also upload pictures. And these pictures are great uh, for getting agent referrals because their picture shows up on the report as well if you add one. Um, and so the agents absolutely love having their own face on the report as well. Um, okay, quickly, we're gonna go into settings. Um, up here, you can set your company profile and your inspector profile. Um, I uh, recommend using a professional picture uh, instead of just a selfie where you're looking kind of weird and at a weird angle. Um, you're a professional now, you got it. Um, I think the highlight of our hilarity 
uh, was one day we had a, uh, an inspector who was testing out the software uh, type into TechSport and they had replaced their uh, inspector profile picture with a picture of Jesus. And so Jesus is now a home inspector and we died laughing because that was, we did not expect that. Cool. Um, services and fees. Let's click into here. And this is how your um, prices and what's going to automatically be pulled in um, template wise and agreement wise, this is how you're going to set it. Um, I kind of covered this already, but I do see two different ways, service-based, or you can also do um, package-based of your basic residential inspection only gets this, but then the platinum one, you get this and sewer scope, that kind of thing. We open up residential inspection, and there is a more deep YouTube video list of stuff um, in the setup series where everything is broken down. So there's there's more information in here that I'm going to go over in this quick overview, um, but that helpful video will help you. Plus, I did it, so I'm humble bragging. All right, you can change your base cost, the base duration. You can select multiple templates to pull in. We've got a ton of different templates in our sample um, section. You can select multiple agreements. Um, oh, also, uh, apparently it's not intuitive to some people, so I'd like to point out with these drop-down menus, to get out of them, you just click off. Um, some people were confused why once you select one thing, it doesn't close again, and it's because you can select multiple things. So it would be annoying to have to go in and click multiple, so click off. Cool. Um, modifiers. We've got a bunch of different modifiers. Square footage, age of home, your built. Um, if you have a particular zip code, uh, 90210 comes to mind that some people wouldn't mind paying extra, or it's far away from you. Um, and on that note, miles away from company address or kilometers away from company address. Um, you can use these modifiers. Um, we play with this language a lot because they're a little bit hard to understand. Um, these value symbols in math are the best that I can get uh, for trying to make these manageable. The, this field right here for age of home being greater than 20 or less than and equal to 30 is really 21 to 30 is the age range. Um, it's, I'm so bad at explaining this part of it. Um, so this is exclusive. It does not include the number 20. And this is inclusive. It does include the number 30. So if you were to add another field down here of age of home, you would want to make sure that you start the next range on 30 or like this 1500, 2000. Make sure you start down here on 2000. 2000 is going to be included in the age range or the square footage range up here, but this number will really be 2001. I can clarify that more on the tech support chat bubble if I just confused everyone who's watching this. Um, you can also add additional fees on here. I do want to make sure you guys know these are additive, so it will be base cost plus this. It's not this is the fee that, that applies to everything. So you're going to want to do, if it, this square footage range applied, it'd be 300 plus 50. You wouldn't want to put 350 in there. Um, you can also add a duration, and that's additive to your base duration. You can delete these. Um, you can add more modifiers down here. And these are pre-populated, particularly off of uh, the Zillow information that you have in there. If there's no Zillow um, listing, there will be a listing for your built or square footage in there too, so you can get uh, modify that during scheduling. Um, Add-ons are um, things that you can add the templates and the agreements for. Um, usually I see things like sewer scope and radon with additional fees. You can add descriptions for them. This is also a great place to add discounts, and you add a discount by adding a negative value fee down here. Uh, but the ability to add templates, oh, there's a radon, let's go over here and select a radon template. And so whenever you do an add-on, that also saves you a lot of time. Um, taxes, particularly for my Canadians out there, um, you can add, or the Americans usually use it for credit card fee. You can name your service fee tax if you're in Canada. You can add your percentage, um, all that good stuff. You can add more services. Yeah, basic overview. Go watch the YouTube video if you have more questions on that or text port chat bubble. Okay, we're gonna go out. Schedule. We've got two different integrated scheduling options. Um, you can either use this online scheduler or you can use the inspection request form. 
Um, I guess before I keep uh, going, I've got a couple more questions. Okay, so pause on the schedulers. If you create a new custom automated email to go out with the originals, uh, like if you do a time-based update, I'm not 100% sure I get your question, Matt. Um, the ability to add further custom automated email tracks is actually a really exciting um, development that our developers are working on right now and we expect to be out at the end of Q1. So you would be able to use that tool to match ISN with um, ISN's functionality of, I would like an email to go out to this when an agreement is signed and then it will trigger this. So you're not limited to the ones in the current automated email section. I think that's the answer to your question. Type in if I uh, didn't hit it. Um, our agreement emails to client and agent auto-generated once the inspection is scheduled and all the uh, relevant, that's not spelled right, data um, is entered. Um, it's actually just at confirmation. Uh, and so it will auto-populate at confirmation. If you change client data or the fees afterward, you need to delete the agreement and regenerate it to get that new information in there. It doesn't regenerate for legal purposes um, automatically. Um, can we set an individual fee for square footage rather than base plus modifier? Um, the workaround for that would be your base would be zero and your pricing would be completely dependent on the modifier itself. So you could have a base price of zero and then for each square footage range have 250, 350, 450, something like that. Um, there is not a way to have a mix of that where you have a base, but if you have square footage, mileage, modifier, then only that applies. So you gotta work with a combination of the two. Cool. Uh, okay, caught up on the chat. Cool, all right. T timeout, timeout's off. We're doing scheduling now. Online scheduler. Um, I will show you, it is easier. Open it up. You can scroll down here. If you have a website that we did not build for you, we do build websites, they're beautiful, I love them. Um, you can grab the embed code here to embed your online scheduler into your website. Um, these settings that I'm quickly scrolling through right now, um, you can add um, choice of inspectors if you've got multiple inspectors. This don't allow scheduling within. Um, it used to be a frequently asked question, um, and it's kind of gone away in the last year, actually. Um, but this is availability in the future. So don't allow someone a day ahead or six hours ahead um, to schedule me. So it prevents people surprising you and saying, hey, I'd like an inspection in an hour. And you're like, I'm more than an hour away from you. Um, the most common one I see is 24 hours, is the buffer period of time, is the other way I describe this. Um, you can choose to show client pricing details or not. You can, um, that will um, affect the quote at the end, whether or not it shows your modifiers. It would still show the total amount, it just wouldn't show, oh, I charge you extra for square footage, or I charge you whatever. Some people like it, some people don't. Require confirmation. If you have someone submit, um, I would like this time and date for this inspection, you can either choose to require confirmation where you need to go in and accept it in order for it to be a confirmed inspection, or you can have it just go directly under your schedule and have them go directly on it. Um, pros and cons, we live in a um, very instant gratification society and sometimes that extra loophole of needing confirmation, people reschedule or find, find another inspector. Other inspectors really want to be able to control their own schedule and um, so you can choose either way. Um, this is the uh, text that will show up when you do confirm the inspection, so you can add that in there. Um, if you do conversion tracking, you can add it in there. Um, these emails are real nifty. You can choose, um, the first two are whether or not whenever there's a completed booking, or I guess it's one and three, are when there's a completed booking, you can either choose to get an email or a text message. You, the inspector, that, hey, something new has happened on your calendar. Hooray, you got business. Two and four are actually when someone enters information into the online scheduler and then navigates away from the page. So they didn't actually go through and hit the confirmation button. This is great for making sure that you guys don't lose out on business. You can click into that and see, oh, they entered their name and their phone number and their email, but they stopped when they actually got to the calendar. Oh, well, maybe they didn't see the availability. And you're able to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw you didn't schedule. Is there something I can help you with? 
and that helps you not lose business. So one in three um, is the, you get in progress bookings um, information there. Cool, okay, online scheduler. We open it up. More people use the online scheduler than the inspection request form. The inspection request form, which I'll show you here in a little bit, um, is basically a form that they fill out with, I like this day and time, but they don't actually see your availability, um, stuff like that. So first on the um, online scheduler, you can scroll down, they can view your sample report, very important and lovely, or your company profile. Um, you can, they can choose what services they want. If you have any add-ons in your services and fees, um, they will, once you click off, apparently that's also not intuitive, so I like to point it out, you click it, and then you can click it off. Um, the add-ons will show up down here, and you can say you're military, thank you for your service, um, or I am military. You can always review this, and if they're trying to cheat you and get a discount they shouldn't get, you can take it away. Don't you worry, you're not stuck. Um, okay, so if we go in here, and we enter, whoop, it's being funky. Um, you can see it's found by Zillow. This is, again, our office address. Um, and if we continue to scroll down, it's gonna grab the square footage and you're built from Zillow over here. They can check if it's occupied or utilities are on. And then we would hit next. So now you're gonna get the client contact information. Um, we put it in this order so that you get their information first. We had a lot of uh, inspectors uh, wanting the calendar first um, in there, which is actually the third page up here, the date. Um, but we found that they were losing business, and so we wanted them to um, get this client information first so that they can reach out to them instead of just going directly to the calendar. Um, plus, it makes it a more qualified lead. You don't get spammed or a competitor trying to take up your availability. Cut through a world of uh, home inspections. Cool. You can add agent information and that'll auto populate. Um, you can add a listing agent on there and you can go next. So the cool part about this is that in that settings and then availability, you can set up your availability based off of I want to work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or I want to do an inspection at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Um, and they will be able to go through here and say, oh, well, for the 30th, hmm, I think I do want that 8 a.m. inspection. And so they can request a specific time and date on a calendar. Now, if you have require completion, or excuse me, require confirmation, nope, gonna back it up because that's gonna confuse people. All right, the way you set up your availability, if you have a confirmed inspection, so if I have a, a noon time slot in here, as soon as it is booked and confirmed, it gets taken off your calendar, so you can't be double booked. The only time I do see people getting hypothetical double bookings are as if they have required confirmation on there and they haven't gone in and actually confirmed the inspection. So they have an inspection request in there. Well, that's gonna keep your availability open. And that's a good thing because what if it's a VIP client or one home inspection was only $200 and the other one is $10,000. Obviously that's a ridiculous number. But you'd be able to choose which one best fits. Um, and cater to your VIP clients or things like that. Um, and so you could only hypothetically double book if you have um, an unconfirmed request in there. Otherwise, if you have a confirmed inspection, your availability goes away so that nobody else could even see an 8 a.m. or 2 p.m. or I've chosen noon slot for this. Cool. So they would hit 8 a.m. over here and it would pull up with this quote form where they can see the pricing based off of um, your services and fees. And again, this is the stuff that you can choose to turn off if you don't wanna give them those details until later in the invoice. Um, and then they can add anything else you'd like to know and hit submit and that would send either an inspection request over to you or confirm to your schedule based off of your settings. Um, the other one we have is this inspection request form. Um, which, let me open this guy up. Oop. There we go, sorry. There's so many things happening right now. Okay, inspection request form. You can name um, the inspection name or price on here, and that's your base. Um, the default start time, uh, default hours, what they want for the inspection agreement. It's very basic. 
usually the people who use the instruction request form are the ones that want to be involved in the scheduling process, um, not the ones who want the agent's compliance to have the minimum amount of work. Um, so yeah, inspection request form would be, you would click this link and open it up and you can tell me about you. You can also have an agent version of the form um, about the property, what are you interested in? And so it's deliberately basic because you are meant to reach out to them again to schedule the inspection and upsell them and do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and then you would hit submit. All right, oh, all your faces are blocking me clicking back. Cool, okay, perfect. Um, okay, so now we're gonna scroll up and quickly we're gonna do, if you click this schedule button, this is how you're gonna set your availability for the um, online scheduler. Um, you can choose to go to open scheduling, which is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., say. And it's important to note that that 5 p.m. is a hard stop time. It's when you're, you want your day to end. It's not the last time slot they can schedule. It's if you have a three hour inspection and you want your day to end at five, 2 p.m. is the last time that they could schedule. So that's important for the open scheduling. For the time slots, you can add as many time slots as you want in here. Um, usually I see two to three a day. Um, something like on Sundays, I want to be able to do three Tuesdays. I want to be able to do two, that kind of stuff. You can set up your availability for each different inspector that you have. Um, so if you have a guy that can never work Sundays, then you could take off his availability on here and still have other inspectors be able to do it. Um, and then you'd hit save all. Um, okay. I'm going to go back to settings and I'm going to check the group chat real quick. Okay. Um, still confused, agreement to emails. Okay, so I'm gonna go over again when the agreement is generated. Um, and then if you're still confused, Chuck and Angela, um, feel free to jump on the tech support chat bubble um, after this is over and either I can help you or Alexis is on there as well and we can send you screenshots. Um, and while I'm on it, this green chat bubble over here um, is where Alexis and I live. Um, not really, but it's fun. So you can click this green chat bubble during business hours. We cover all the business hours for all the US time zones. So 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and during that, we're currently down to a two minute response time. So yes, you're talking to me through a chat but you're gonna get so much faster and efficient service and send you screenshots and all that good stuff. There's also a button on the app for help. We do schedule phone calls because it usually requires stepping away from multiple users and we wanna respect everybody's time. We schedule them in advance. Of course, we take phone calls for urgent situations and we'll step out and help you um, doing that. We really wanna be able to service you as best as we can. But this chat bubble is great, I love it. Um, and we hear that our inspectors love it too. So you can do this new conversation, or if you've already started a conversation with us and you'd like to continue it, but you close the chat bubble, you can see, do this see previous, and you can keep on chatting on it on a different one. That's Alexis, that's our support bubble, that's Kevin, that's Mike, that's me, and that's Laura. There you go. We also have a ton of articles, like hundreds of articles with screenshots about how to do things. So if it's not during business hours, you can still go on here and we'll answer you at some point when we do get back on, but you can also look up articles and usually you can find your answers. Cool, okay. Um, the agreements are generated when you confirm an inspection. So you're gonna enter it and you're gonna hit save. That's gonna pull all that information into um, your agreement. So the client's name, the um, inspection address, something like that. Everything's gonna pre-populate in there. Now, if you misspelled the client name or the inspection date, something like that, um, or you rescheduled, you're gonna to wanna to go on and delete the old agreement that has the incorrect information and then add a new agreement. Um, and when you add a new agreement, it's going to repopulate based off of the current information in the inspection details page. Um, and so that agreement is now gonna be up to you. When you hit the save button or the confirm button in the initial circumstance or when you add a new agreement in the second circumstance. Um, if you're still a little bit confused, jump on that chat bubble. Um, <sighs> Okay, um, is there a way to do a discount as a percentage instead of a fixed amount? Not right now. Um, in one of our current development updates, um, the guys are working on it right now, 
Um, we plan on being able to give you guys access to discount codes where you could do that for sales or you could have a discount code for military that's a percent PT. Right now you're stuck with the negative values um, that are set. Um, you can always calculate out, um, you know, 10% of 300 would be $30 and you can give that as a negative value fee and still advertise as 10%. Um, so that's your workaround in the meantime. Um, otherwise, um, soon in the future, all that good stuff. Very exciting. Cool. Um, can we set an individual fee for square? Oh, I already answered that one. Cool. We're good. Okay. Um, scrolling back down. Cool. We are in settings. Got a nose itch. Cool. Um, location tags are the buttons, the preset buttons that you can choose. Um, and so you can modify those. Um, actually, I've seen a lot of people do like first floor and second floor. Um, and you can choose as many buttons as you want. You can also type on the actual report. Report tools. Um, if you want that cost estimator. Photo quality. I usually recommend it around two thirds of the way up. Um, all the way at the higher end of the image is going to be really data intensive, particularly if you're taking them on the app and setting them up. So it's going to be a slower upload. Um, they'll, of course, look gorgeous. You can't really tell a difference, to be honest with you, between two thirds and all the way up. Um, I would like to point out that a lot of the infrared cameras actually have really low pixels and low resolutions. Um, and so make sure when you're using an infrared camera, and you're uploading them into Spectora later, either with the gallery function on the uh, phone or the, or the iPads, or in the report editor that you're using the best quality photo that your infrared camera can get you. Um, yeah, they have ridiculously low resolution on those. Um, cool. Uh, cost estimator, enable it, disable it. Require completion to publish. When you're going through a report, if you have finished all the informational comments within an item, it'll turn green. Once you've finished all of the items within a section, it will turn green. This is great for inspectors who like to make sure that they don't miss anything or newbies who are just starting out and trying to figure out the flow. Um, and so what that will do is it will gray out the publish button um, and so that you cannot hit publish until every single item and section within a report have turned green. So, um, Otherwise from that, you can publish at any time. If there's an informational comment that you have in there that is not applicable, and so it's screwing up your completion rating, you can always delete that comment. And so then you could get your completion rating. Um, I actually do a way more detailed explanation of that, that with visuals. Um, in, I did an FAQ for people who commonly call themselves not tech savvy. I labored over how to not be insulting with that title because it's not insulting at all. Tech is really hard. Um, and so I put together a PowerPoint slideshow that goes much slower and it answers questions like that with a lot more visuals. So FAQ for less than tech savvy um, uh, has a great explanation at the end of it um, for the required completion to publish. Uh, cool. Down in company settings, you can add your social links, Instagram, Facebooks, um, uh, to the top of your web reports. Uh, in, in your company profile. Great for, oh, they've got a Facebook page, let me go like it. Uh, your subscription is your subscription with us. We are a subscriptions-based company. Um, that's a continual commitment between the two of us, us as a company and you guys, that we're gonna continue pumping out new features, um, seven day a week tech support. Um, usually we're averaging like 24 to 36 hour bug fixes when we can replicate those bugs. Um, so we're really working hard for your money. It also gives you the ability to cancel your subscription if you're not using it um, or if you're displeased with us. And so you can cancel at any time. Um, I don't want you to, please be my friend. <laughs> um, integrations, we've got a whole bunch. Google Drive will back up the PDFs of your reports and your invoices to your Google Drive account every night. Um, and so you can have that backup if you want. We actually have triplicate of servers throughout the country. We use Amazon Web Services. And so we safely save all of your um, reports. If you ever were to stop being a Spectora subscriber, you'd still be able to log in and access your reports. We're not gonna cut you off from them. You just wouldn't be able to schedule new inspections. Um, QuickBooks integrates with QuickBooks Online and does the invoice stuff to help you with that. MailChimp is the um, marketing automation cam campaign platform over here for doing those agent newsletters or Christmas cards, stuff like that. Um, Secure24, uh, they're an alarm company. 
uh, you can set up an account with them and send over. It's an opt in, not an opt out. I always like to be very, very clear with that. We as Victoria do not share your data. That is your data. If we ever do down the line have a partnership with an insurance company or porch or home advisor or something like that, it would be something that you would opt into. It would not be something that we tell you and then you have to opt out of. Um, same thing with Secure24 is you need to talk to your clients in order to hit the su submit Secure24 data. So it's a manual push of information on you as the inspector to send that over to Secure24. It's not gonna pump over, um, the, so Spectora is not going to pump over the information to Secure24 for every single inspection. It's only when you hit that submit to Secure24 button. Whew, a lot. Um, we currently have an integration with uh, Simple Solutions Call Center. If you have an account with them, um, you can set that up. We have an ISN integration where you use them for all of your business tools, scheduling, automated emails, agreements, payments, and you still are able to use our report editor. Um, that's the best way I can describe that. We just become a report editor. So you wouldn't be able to use us for like a payment provider and then them for scheduling. It's one or the other. Um, recall check, um, you would just like Secure24, hit submit to recall check and send that information over the recall check app. You would still use the recall check app to take pictures of the serial numbers and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so all we really do is prevent the um, duplicate of typing. Cool. Um, and I've got, you can type into the text board top up one. I can talk to you more about these guys. Localization. Um, we've got currency, um, time zone, how you want your date format, if you've got a country code, user settings. Um, navigation is the buttons at the top here. You can customize those, like if you never want to see payments up there. You can always access all of them through this drop down menu of your name, um, but you can choose what your cheat sheet buttons up here are. Um, and these are your unused ones, and you would just click and drag. Um, dashboard settings, you can choose how your calendar, calendar view is. You can say just today, this week, four weeks, um, which is um, the future four weeks from today, or you can do month, January, well, almost February. Um, there's a couple different calendar options in there. When your workday begins, when your workday ends. Um, great for if you're using that day view. This starting address for driving directions is what populates the map on your front dashboard. Um, so if you start driving always from your home address and not the company address, you can type in your address in here and then you'll be able to see what your day looks like from that dashboard um, on there. Miles willing uh, to travel, you can enter it in there. Um, we've got a couple per user, not per company integrations, uh, Google Calendar and iCalendar. iCalendar is just one way. Uh, Spectora, when you schedule an inspection, it'll populate in iCalendar. Google Calendar is actually a two-way integration. It's really cool. So you can set up either a company calendar or a personal calendar. And so you make sure that when you schedule a dentist appointment in Google Calendar, it gets pulled over to the Spectora calendar. And so nobody can schedule you an inspection while you're getting your teeth cleaned. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, blog development articles uh, on that Google integration. Type it in the chat bubble and I'll send them over to you. Um, user options. Um, this is where you can change your uh, password and your email. You have to go in here to change your email because it's your login. And so we want, it's a per user needs to change the login. Um, if you don't want to be a Lexus nice friend or say you don't like having a chat bubble pop up on your app during inspections, you can disable, disable all chat functions. Um, a lot of the times when I get frustrations with people saying that this chat bubble um, hides things, it's actually a display setting on your computer is my fun fact. If you go into the display settings uh, for scaling, for uh, your computer, a lot of the times if you're doing scale to fit versus, um, there's a couple different zoom options, um, doing scale to fit will make that chat bubble not cover anything up. Um, but if you don't like us, that is fine and you can disable all the chat functions. And then um, we've got beta testers um, who get some of our new developments um, ahead of time before they're released to the public. And uh, they're wonderful and we love them. And if you're interested in using a beta, um, being a beta tester, um, know that it's going to come with some bugs because you guys are testing with us and making it better. And we really take those suggestions to heart with this is confusing. Can you clarify this language? And we um, edit that before we debut to the public. So there's that. Um, okay. 
I know we only have like 15 minutes left. There's so much in the, the software. Um, so I'm going to, everybody jump on the group chat and I'm gonna answer all the questions on here now if you have any further ones. Um, so Rick wants to know if there's an integration forthcoming with the InterNACHI buyback program. So we do have it on our features request list. There's a couple things that we're trying to figure out. And honestly, we've got a couple things ahead of time in the development list that we need to get um, through before we would do the buyback program, but it is on our radar. And actually, if you guys want to see something pretty cool, um, I will go over here and then to this feature roadmap. This is actually uh, visible to everybody once it pulls up um, again with the, uh, being on with so many people makes my internet go very, very slow. Okay, well, I'll handle that in a second. Um, but it's a Trello board that lists what we're currently developing, minor um, suggestions. Here we go, I just had to scare it, it's fine. Um, okay, so we've got new submissions on here. Um, we've got major enhancement ideas, minor enhancement ideas. You can scroll over and see what's in the coming soon section. Um, and then you can also see what's on deck, which is the developers have not yet gotten to it, but it's what they plan on to next, like the targeted discounts and service fee discounts. Um, what they're currently working on under development, what's in beta testing, and what has already been released. So uh, yeah, we are constantly uh, developing, and uh, it's pretty exciting to be part of the software. Um, does anyone have any further questions that I can answer on, answer, that was a weird way to say that, um, on the chat bubble. There's a group chat on the bottom corner. Actually, I think it depends on where your list is. Um, other things that I need to note since nobody is really typing out in group chat. Um, Spectora, YouTube, backslash uh, Spectora. Um, go to the setup series playlist. I know I went super fast. Thank you guys for your patience on that one. Um, and you can go on and see segmented, oh, I wanna learn the automated emails today. Oh, I need to learn more about the inspection details. Oh, I would like, I know we didn't actually hit the mobile app. It's very easy to use. And we've got a 10 minute demo on there to run through the mobile app. Um, we've got um, all sorts of good stuff on there. Um, other fun thing is you guys spend so much time in your car. Um, Kevin actually came through and uh, created this wonderful podcast called Spectora Spotlight. It's available on Spotify and um, a lot of the regular places where you get your podcast and it's pretty great. And he interviews um, a ton of people throughout the entire industry, the top producer agent in Colorado, um, call center reps about their experiences how inspectors went from solos into multis and how they grew efficiently and now they're up to 12 inspectors in the case of Scott Home Inspection. So Kevin does a really nice job with that. So Spectora Spotlight, check that out. Okay, can we please touch on payments? Yes, I hit payments. YouTube address is YouTube uh, slash Spectora, pretty easy. Um, okay, whoops, I'm in the wrong area. Whoop. All right, if we go to, where am I going? Settings. Now we scroll down. Payment options. Whoop, I didn't hit the right thing. Payments. So right now we have a couple, a couple different options. We've got authorized, we've got Stripe, and we've got Square. And your percentages of what you pay for processing fees depends on the agreement that you have with them. Um, and Things like Square has the on-site Stripe reader um, that will get you different percentages. Um, we are very excited to premiere here very soon um, Spectora payments. We actually negotiated with Stripe um, to have lower processing fees. Um, don't quote me on this because I'm doing this off the top of my head. Um, I believe that we are going to be down at 2.75%. Um, um, which normally like authorize and I think Stripe are both up at like 2.9 ish. Um, so you'd be getting a discount on that um, just because we wanted to get our inspectors better uh, payment processors. So um, if you have authorized Stripe or Square, there's three different logins that you can figure out how to do. 
um, with like Square, it's your email address and username, authorized as API logins, transaction keys, public keys, and you would enter them in here. And um, you can also add invoice text in here if you want that to populate in your invoice. If we go over here to the dashboard and we go into any inspection, so I'll just do this one for today. Um, in the client and agent view, come on, okay. Oh, we don't have a payment. This is what I get for flying by the seat of my pants. We gotta add a fee. So let's go over here and add a fee. The long and the short of it is that when you have a fee in here um, for $100, and then you scroll down and you hit save, a payment button will show up in the client agent portal um, where I don't, this is a free trial test account, it's not a real person. So this orange area would also have an orange button that would say pay now, and it would pop up with a enter your credit card information system in there. And then we securely pass along that credit card information through your integration um, over to your payment processor. Um, and so you would still do refunds and everything through them um, and deposit things to your bank account, do things like that. Um, but your client would be able to hit the pay now button and enter their credit card information on there. Um, in the next mobile app release, I believe we are uh, debuting the um, ability on your app to hit pay now and ha do the credit card information on your app. So if you're in person with the client, you can do it with them there. Currently, there is a button for pay now on there, but what it does is it loops back to this client agent portal. Um, and so you would need internet connection for it. Um, and so it would, it's just a cheat sheet link to um, this payment button where you could enter the, the credit card information. Um, it's pretty much everything you've talked about today broken down in your YouTube library. Yes, and honestly, way better than today. I mean, this was a pretty good, fun little chat that we've been almost going out for two hours here. Um, but um, that setup series that I keep on looping back to, I deliberately made it because it's very hard to digest two hours of information um, and go through it and answer all of your questions. Um, it's just our, our brains aren't made that way. Um, so I went through and I deliberately made segments for um, manageable about 20 minute sections. There's a couple that are like 25 and there's a couple that are only like seven minutes. And so there's an intro to Spectora that gives you the basic of we're web-based, what browsers we um, are um, good with, don't use Internet Explorer, <laughs> um, is the cheat on there. And then it breaks down every um, different tab um, up top on Spectora.com. And then there's also mobile um, demos on there. So yes, everything is on the YouTube library. Um, is PayPal on the roadmap for a payment type? If I click into the roadmap, um, I believe it is... I don't remember in which, which column it is. Yes, it's on the, the roadmap. Um, PayPal has a little bit of a tougher integration um, that we need to build. It's not as easy as just a check on, check off. Um, our developers need to actually develop specific code to match what PayPal needs. Um, and then there's all sorts of negotiations um, to take place um, on the business side of it in order for that to happen. So we definitely want to give you guys that PayPal integration. Um, it's I don't have a timeline for it, unfortunately, but it is something that we want. So, yep, business is complicated. Um, cool. Um, all right. I think I'm caught up on all the questions. This is your last chance for questions. Um, I'm going to, uh, all this is recorded, by the way, um, which is why I turned off everybody's volume and stuff. Um, but I will take this and I will put it up on the uh, YouTube channel if you want to go back and watch this um, or if you missed a section of it. Um, but the setup series is usually the way to go with that. Um, Alexis and I are on the tech support chat bubble whenever you would like it. Um, and then uh, here to answer questions that you've got. And I'm excited that you guys are interested in Spectora or learning about Spectora. And we're here to help you in any way that you need. Um, also, we build websites, they're beautiful, and we do SEO. Um, if you're interested in learning how to uh, rank higher on Google, um, we just became a uh, 
Google uh, email address reseller. So if you would like to get your domain homeinspectioncompany.com and have your email be Casey at homeinspectioncompany.com um, as your email instead of having a Gmail address, we'll be able to do that here shortly once we get a couple little things figured out with that. Um, but yeah, very exciting stuff. Um, type in if you guys have any further questions, I would love to answer them. Alexis would love to answer them. Um, I hope this has been good. We're planning on doing another one of these in about two weeks, I think February 8th. Um, I will try to put a little bit more time into planning this. Um, thank you guys for flying by the seat of my pants with me. Um, the coming off the conference and then immediately trying to hit the ground running with all that stuff was just a little stressful. Um, but yes, we love you all. We're so grateful for your, all of your support and feedback. Um, never think you're a bother on the tech support chat. That's what we're here for. Okay, um, everybody's saying thank you on the chat. Thank you. Uh, do the gif of the bowing. Um, okay, I'm going to stop the share now and go upload this to YouTube. Um, I will talk to you guys all later. Bye.